What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Stock Tradamus, a.k.a. The Atheist Killer, a.k.a. Willie Chambo. Back at you with a brand new reaction video. People have been uh, requesting me to do this one. I don't know who the lady is. Her name's Amber Ruffin. Apparently, she did a video that's extremely racist, and they wanted me to respond to it. So, without any further ado, man, let's just jump right into it. Before we do, I also want to tell you guys, the way I'm going to do this reaction video is I'm going to let it play through. I don't know if I'm going to watch the whole thing or not. I don't know how fucking bad it is. But uh, at the end is, actual, is actually when I'm going to respond to... The bullshit that I'm sure I'm about to see. So, let's play it. Let's take a hard left turn into seriousness, shall Ooh. we? Okay, now, during a speech on racial equity this week, President Biden ordered the federal agency that oversees housing to correct the, quote, historical racism in federal housing policies. But you may be asking yourself, where did those policies come from in the first place? How did we get here? We'd like to break that How down for you now here, in a Amber, segment called... Know. How did we get here? How'd we get here, Amber? Lately, there's been a lot of talk about systemic racism. Everyone claims they want to fix it, but we can't even agree on what it is. Systemic racism does not even exist, so I see where she's going with this shit. Just know it's bad, like poverty or pollution or the way white people dance. Oh, but hold on, hold on. I know I told you guys I'm going to talk to you at the end, but it took her exactly 41 seconds or 42 seconds to be a racist piece of shit. She says that white people can't dance, huh? Why don't you go on Google and type and type in who the best dancers in the world are? Why don't you just do a little little Google a uh, little Google search? Or why don't you even just go watch Dancing with the Stars sometimes? Because white people's the best dancers in the world, Ruffin. Matter of fact, Miss Ruffin, would you like to have a fucking dance off with your boy Chambo? I don't think so, bitch. Systemic racism isn't just an idea, it's a real thing. There's a place where you False. can go and see real live systemic racism Lies. right in front of you. It's Negative. called The Hood. Negative. I'm sure you've heard about it. Your favorite rapper grew up there. You've probably seen movies about it. In a movie, you can tell you're in The Hood because there's always rap music playing in the background when the brave white savior goes there to drag Jamal away from the gang so he can play in the big chess tournament. How dare you take someone away from The Hood and provide them a better life? <laughs> But did you hear what she said? She said, uh, you can always tell you're in the hood when uh, the rap music is playing and then uh, the white dude comes in to save. No, you can always tell you're in the hood when the rap music is playing and people are killing each other and, and they're over-sexualizing their women and they're glorifying violence and women are having babies out of wedlock and aborting the kids and all. Let's talk about the real shit that's going on, Amber. Not the, don't put, picture the white guy coming in to save the day like that's some bad shit. Tell us what's really going on in the hood. What's, what's really happening when you know that you're in the ghetto, baby? But... Have you ever wondered how the hood got that way? Systemic racism, oh, here we that's go. how. In the 19... <laughs> here comes the victimhood shit. I knew it. I fucking knew it, man. 30s, America was in the thick of the Great Depression. The banks had failed and everyone had lost their home. Hey, Amber, what's your favorite kind of, uh, what's your favorite kind of uh, cheese, baby? I'm gonna send you some cheese with that wine. Cry me a fucking river. Homes and unemployment was at the highest it would ever be until this idiot came along. 45, so FDR best president had ever. an idea called the New Deal. The New Deal gave jobs to nearly every American, set the minimum wage, and created a retirement plan called Social Security, and it worked. For the first time in American history, you could have a regular job this and make a crazy. decent living. You wouldn't necessarily be rich, but you wouldn't be poor either. They called it the middle class. Oh, to get that kind class. of job security That's today, terrible. you would need three jobs and an OnlyFans account. Now, if you're Hold wondering on, if this... Is this bitch supposed to be funny? Like she's a comedian or is she serious about this shit? New Deal made things better for black people. The answer is... See, part of the New Deal was the Homeowners Loan Corporation. They were an organization that guaranteed home loans for everyone. But just like an episode of Friends, they didn't include black people. That's a fucking How lie. How could they separate the white applicants from the black applicants? That's a fucking lie. They didn't have to. Segregation did that for them. False. Because of segregation laws, black people could only live in certain areas. This bitch so lying. the United States government drew up color-coded maps for nearly every city in America and told the banks, we'll guarantee loans for everyone who lives anywhere mm -hmm. except in the red areas. Those just so happened to be the areas where black people lived. Like how the only thing had nothing to do with skin color. Absolutely zero. I'm glass at Walgreens just so happens to be Miss Jessie's. Oh, you funny. They created a funny. system based on racism to make sure black people couldn't be a part of this middle class. That's a lie. They came up with a name for it, too. They that's called it redlining. We called it the hood. We're going to talk about redlining in a minute, but that's an absolute fucking lie. But 
That's way in the past, right? Like Downton Abbey phones and these pants. What does that have to do with now? Well, how many of you watching right now live in or know someone who lives in a home that their parents or grandparents owned? That's called generational wealth. And home ownership is the number one driver of wealth in America. Number two, of course, is how many Beanie Babies you have. You can use a home to pay for college or start a business or, you know, not be homeless. But if you look at almost any major American city, most of the formerly redlined areas are still majority black and low income. That's because banks didn't stop doing this until, oh, hold on, let me look it up. Let's this bitch see, is when a did banks stop? Retard, they never bro. stopped. Homes in majority black neighborhoods are valued at 25% lower than homes in white areas. Even This bitch got the IQ of a goddamn goldfish, bro. And the crime rate and the neighborhood amenities are exactly the same. And because school funding is based on home values, the average non-white school district receives $2,226 less per student than a white school district, which is why the gym in a public school in a black neighborhood looks like this. And the gym at a white school looks like this. There's even studies that show schools in black neighborhoods have smaller libraries. Meanwhile, at the white school, they're checking out Encyclopedia Brown from here. And because wealth and education are the number one factors for crime, police are more likely to patrol these neighborhoods, which is why even though there is no difference in the rate of drug use between white and black people, let me say that again. There is no difference in the rate of drug use between white and black people. Black people are three and a half times more likely to be arrested for drugs. All right. I had enough of this shit, man. First of all, let me say this. Uh, Mr. Am Mrs. Amber Ruffin, whoever the fuck you are, you clearly are a fucking brain dead amoeba. Okay. And, and let me just let me just say this real quick about the point you just made. Black people commit so-called black people commit more than 50 percent of the violent crime in the country so you know what the goddamn fucking cops are patrolling these neighborhoods more so so you would clearly understand why it is that more people are getting pulled over in these neighborhoods because that's where all the fucking cops are sent to because you know why because that's where all the fucking crime is at you goddamn fucking guppy so with that being said i'm not watching no more of this shit we're gonna get right into destroying the shit that she talked about and then uh that's it man let's do it so how many fails were actually in this video, man? It's hard to keep count. Notice, right at the beginning, though, she used the word equity instead of equality. I want you guys to pick up on that because that's a common phrase that these wild radicals from the left are, are starting to use now. They talk about equity instead of equality, and I want you guys to start paying attention to that. Next, uh, right out the gate, man, I think it took her 42 seconds to, be, to show her true racist colors man she said that the best dancers in the world are not white uh if, if you if you believe that is true i i would like to um have you challenge your superior melanin skin tone to a dance-off with i don't know let's say uh mikhail barry shenikov hmm, i don't know pick someone go pick one of the white people from um, dancing with the stars i don't give a shit but i'm telling you right fucking now stop being a racist piece of shit okay number two notice that she talked about generational wealth and people passing down their homes and real estate to their families and shit i agree with that actually because i'm a proponent of reparations you may be shocked by that but yes it's true but i want you to focus on how she made a joke right after that by saying well the second biggest source of generational wealth is beanie babies trying to be funny while being racist instead of taking accountability and saying a big part of generational wealth is actually keeping fathers in the home, working hard, making good choices in life, not killing people, not aborting your children, or women, women not having babies out of wedlock all the goddamn time. But I knew she wouldn't take any accountability. She's a weak-minded, pathetic, racist guppy, so all she can do is find different ways to point the finger and try to be funny. Because she's never going to take accountability for the goddamn actions, okay? Now, next, let's talk about redlining for a minute. Redlining didn't have anything to do with race. It has to do with business. People don't want to loan money to shithole areas. No one gives a fuck what color someone's skin is if they can make money off of them. You don't see the tobacco industry redlining urban shitholes, do you? Fuck no, because they make money there. Ghettos just provide a bad return on uh, most investments. That's what the truth is. And that goes for anyone who lives there, white, Mexican, Asian, black, it doesn't matter, dude. Money sees no color. The same way if a so-called black family lives in a nice neighborhood and they have good jobs and good credit and shit, they're going to be able to get loans just fine. It's not about race, man. We actually have laws in place to prevent discrimination in America. 
If you don't know about it, go read about the Civil Rights Act, man. That's how great that's how great the United States is. We hate racism so much that we created a system to ensure things aren't racist. To ensure equality. And for the record, racism didn't make the ghettos the shitholes that they are. Nah. Drugs, sluts, fatherless homes, violence, gangs, and dangerous, sinful, immoral, murderous culture, over-sexualizing women, pride, and glorification of the lowest common denominator. That's what did it. Notice. I want you guys to pay attention to something. Notice. There were no excuse making victimhood crybabies in the Asian communities after America tried to put them in goddamn internment camps. Nah. Because despite the circumstances, they grinded, they worked hard, they put a premium on education, they created a dedicated moral culture for themselves and became even more successful than the whites. So you can cry me a river and fuck yourself with that zero accountability, victimhood, blame everyone else, crybaby bullshit, okay? Moreover, economic impoverishment doesn't take away a person's free will. You still have your free will. That's why you see that's why you see tons of successful so-called black people make it out of the ghetto without ever killing killing anyone, without ever doing drugs, without ever joining gangs, without over sexualizing women. It's a slap in their face, dude. It's a slap at each and every one of their face of those people to claim that their success well, it was just luck. It was just luck and not attribute it to their hard work. Also, to say poverty takes away free will really just begs the question. Why did it not then take away all people's free will? Does it only take the weak people's free will away? You see, this roughin' lady is clearly a brain dead, racist amoeba just trying to push her racist agenda out by dressing it up with falsehoods and shitty comedy. We can all see right through it, man. Next, did you guys hear her talk about how white kids have nice gyms and libraries and shit. Did you know that white kids and Mexicans and Asians also live in the hood and have to use those shitty gyms and libraries as well? It's not only blacks, dude. Whoever makes bad choices in life will have a bad life and will have children who have to go to those shitty schools who are poor and they also have shitty lives as well, probably. It's a trickle down effect, man. If you have parents who make good choices in life, don't fucking kill people and don't do dumb shit. What kind of school do you think their kids are going to go to? Ask LeBron James if you don't believe me. Go ask LeBron James if his kid goes to a shit school with a shit gym with a shit library because he's black. No, of course he doesn't because it's not about skin color. You see, skin color does not make or break you in this country, baby. It's the skills you have. It's the hard work that you put in and it's the good choices that you make in life that determine where you end up and where your kids are going to end up. Number three. I don't know if we're on number three or what fucking number we're on, but I'm getting worked up. The Great Society is what led so-called black families from thriving to poverty. Or as you call it, from thriving to the hood. Because prior to the Great Society, black families were strong and prosperous. They were together and they were healthy. And this successful time in history for so-called blacks was closer to the real race, the real racism, the rampant racism that was going on in the United States at the time, slavery, Jim Crow, and all that shit, it was right around then. So to say racism caused the downfall of blacks is plain and simply a fucking lie. If that were true, why didn't the much more prevalent uh, hate and racism affect or tear apart all black families prior to the implementation of the great society? But you're gonna tell me as racism declined, that it caused it? That makes no fucking sense. The truth is, after the Great Society, that's when black fathers started leaving the home, whether it's right or wrong. Welfare incentivized black mothers to be independent and feel like they no longer needed a male figure in the house. All the shit, man. So then guess what happened? Clear as day, the family broke down. And you can look at it in the history timeline and see that's the exact point where everything changed, man. And for fuck's sake, let me just say this. Please stop playing the goddamn victim all the time. It's cringy. It's weak as fuck. And it looks so goddamn pathetic to keep claiming others have so much power over you. And that the other people that do have all this power over you are responsible then for all your failures. You're that weak? Hmm. That you're just going to keep blaming other people, huh? 
Makes you look fucking pathetic. Furthermore, let's be honest and talk about that chess reference that Mrs. Ruffin made. You guys heard her say that uh, the white guy comes in on the white horse and he saves the black kid out of the ghetto and he teaches him how to play chess. How white people come in and take people out of the good, out of the hood, and they provide a better life for them. How dare you? <laughs> First of all, like I already touched on, God gave you free will despite your circumstances. In other words, no one ever came in and took your free will away from you or forced you to kill your own people or forced you to join a gang or forced you to abort your babies or forced you to have babies out of wedlock, forced you to shake your ass and listen to WAP. None of this shit, man. No one forced you to do any of that before Whitey showed up on the white horse and tried to teach you chess. There is an unlimited number of successful so-called black people who are talented, work hard, make great choices in life and left all the excuses at the door. They never killed anyone. They never joined a gang. They never committed any violent crime. They got loans. They got higher education. Shit. Many of them became the top scientists, doctors, lawyers in the whole country, in the whole world. And guess what? If you work hard enough, again, if you work hard enough and have the goods and the discipline, America is so great that despite your skin color, you can be the president, you could be the vice president or any goddamn thing that you want to be in life. All the excuses and all the victimhood bullshit is not only weak and a lie, it's also disrespectful to all the so-called black people who use their free will and their talent for good. It wasn't luck. It's because they fucking earned it, man. By the way, let me say this. Your refusal, your refusal to ever take accountability oozes insecurity and weakness. The truth is, the biggest factor in the decline of so-called black people since the 60s isn't racism at all. Racism was far more prevalent, as I just talked about back then. Uh, and, but the black family back then was thriving. It's the infusion of the disgusting, ratchet, immoral, urban subculture that over-sexualizes women, promotes gang violence, having children out of wedlock, the glorification of the lowest common denominator, lifts up the sinner while chastising the nerd. We've all seen it. Hmm. That, that, dumb, that dumb retarded kid who's always reading those fucking books. Nah, fuck him, but that drug dealer, hmm? that shooter, yeah, we're going to lift him up. They got his fucking all the bitches, we're going to lift him up. You know what I'm talking about, man. We could talk about truth, or you can lie and dance around a topic. But on this channel, we're not going to dance around shit. I denounced, I want you guys to pay attention. I denounced Christianity because it's retarded. But I know a lot of you are still drinking from that Kool-Aid. So what I would like you to do is show me one Bible verse that says, when God judges you, you can say it wasn't your fault at all. You committed all those sins but it, because it was all Whitey's fault. And then God will still let you in the pearly gates. Hm. Sorry, sorry to break the news to you, but that ain't how it works. And those verses do not exist. God's not going to say, oh, yeah, it's fine. You did all that bad shit because uh, Whitey took your free will away. Nah, sorry, alligator. Not happening. Uh, but don't take my word for it. I wouldn't want any of you guys to take a white person's word for it. After all, we just found out the other day, white people can be racist as early as three months old. <laughs> you could be a three months old white person and be a racist, excuse me. Uh, and also you might accuse me of trying to teach you how to play chess. Who would want that? That's terrible, man. So forget what I gotta say. Go ask Thomas Sowell or Candace Owens. Ask one of them. Never mind. You wouldn't like them either. You would rather get your logic and morals from Cardi B and Little Uzi and all the fucks, man. So. This video that we just watched and Mrs. Amber Ruffin, this shit's a hard pass for me, okay? It's the same old crybaby ass sob story, victimhood bullshit, attempting to make white people look bad with poor logic, no facts, and zero accountability from someone who clearly is the real racist in the story. So salute you, Amber Ruffin, as being a true racist. I'll see you soon. I'm Willie Tambo, the atheist killer. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, smash that bell notification. And if you're feeling froggy, man, hit that cash app link down in the description box. Until next time, man, I'm out of here, bro. Peace.